Hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're going to make a scroll saw pattern. Like I said in the introduction on this week's show, I'm going to show you guys how to make your own portrait scroll saw patterns. You see a lot of guys online doing tutorials and their tutorials involve computer generated images or um, computer programming in order to make these patterns. But I'm going to show you how to do it by hand with nothing more than a pencil and some paper. It's as easy as can be. So to start off, all you need is a picture of somebody, a face shot uh, of the person that you wish to cut out of a scroll saw pattern. Well, now that we have our picture taken, I have this crazy contraption. And what this is, it's just a pine box with a piece of clear plexi on top. And inside we have two two foot long fluorescent fixtures. And they're just your cheap little $10 fixtures that you get from your big box store. They plug into a receptacle and the receptacle is controlled by a switch. And when you flick the switch, of course, it turns your lights on. What is the purpose of this? Well, the purpose of our light table is so that when we lay our photo down on top of our light table, and we will secure this with masking tape, well, once we lay a piece of paper over top, we can really see through this to see the picture onto here because essentially we're going to trace that ugly mug that we took the picture of. So we already have our photo secured to our plexi tabletop and we're just securing our piece of paper over top of our picture with just a little piece of one inch masking tape in each corner. Now, if you wanted to make this job even easier, you could use tracing paper here for your top sheet. So what do we do with it now? Well, let me show you the difference here um, between with and without the light table. But for that, I'm going to have to shut off the filming lights. Well, this is our top sheet and our picture underneath without the light table on. And this is our image with the light table on. And you can see that if you just sort of press down a little bit there, you get a very clear image of the picture that you've printed out. So now it's time to start making our pattern. And the important part here is you don't have to be an artist, but what you need to be able to do is picture in your head what is light and what is dark. And all of the dark areas will get cut out. All of the light areas will remain as wood. So let's start picking some easy ones and tracing them out so that you can see what the process is like. Well, a very obvious part of dark in our pattern will be the arm of my glasses. So that is where we're going to start. And all we're going to do is it's as simple as tracing. So we're going to trace the lines of my glasses here. And sometimes you have to use a little artistic license. In other words, you don't necessarily have to trace all of the glasses. If you trace them all, the piece would fall out and you wouldn't have the image. The eye would be gone. So you want to pick bits and pieces of it so uh, it will mimic or look like the glasses are there. So here we go. We're going to put a veining line for the bottom of the glasses there, just like that. You can see, hopefully, that it's it's just marking out the dark spots. And I can see here that we have another very dark line right here. Just like that. Okay, so that is one lens of my glasses. There 
is another spot here that we can see is very obviously dark, and that is my eye or my pupil of my eye. So again, we're just going to trace around the iris here of my eye. Just bring a line down, just like that. And we can see, or maybe you can't, I'm not sure how this is showing on film, but there's a line of my glasses here where the glass is that's lighter than the, the line that protrudes from my eye. So all we're going to do is we're going to trace this. Just like that. Now we can, if we want, add a few more pieces of the eye here. It's kind of hard to see because of the light that's in here for today, but we'll just trace as best we can. So there's pretty much one eye. And this is a very basic pattern, guys. You can go as in-depth as you like, or you can go as easy as you like. So another good spot here would be the inside of my mouth. So we can trace the teeth just like this. And then when we get to the lip, this now becomes a dark area. So we're just going to bring this over and trace the bottom lip. Just like that. I know, you guys are having problems seeing what I'm doing here because I'm so devilishly handsome. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Okay, so under that bottom lip now is a shadow. You can see it right here. See that shadow? So we want to outline that shadow. It doesn't have to be huge. It's just something to outline the lower lip. Just like this. And then I can sort of see some really dark areas here like that. There we go. There is my bottom lip to find. So at this point now, we can move up to, let's say, our upper lip, because we need to define that. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out this one little piece right here, and that's going to come over here, and down, and it's going to meet up with the teeth. just like that. Now, if at any point in time you want to check your pattern, all you need to do is turn your lights on and turn off your light table. And you can see there that we're starting to get a scroll saw pattern in place. Well, we'll now try to define our area here around the nose. And this can be a little tricky sometimes um, just because not all of the details are always so prominent. And this is where, of course, tracing paper would really come in handy. But we're going to make do with this because I'm just basically showing you the method of doing this. And as I said, you can get as detailed or as, uh, I guess, artistic as you like. And there's part of my nose defined there. And now we'll just, I think we'll just do this section here, which is kind of uh, my cheekbone area there. Just like this, and that will, de oops, okay, don't push too hard. And that will define here the other side 
of my nose. Like that. So now we can move on to our other eye. And our other eye will also incorporate the edge of my nose there. And then it will incorporate my glasses. So we will bring that out there just like this to incorporate the glasses. We'll come up to the eye. And we can see here how that eye wraps around. And that becomes another section here of the glasses. And then we can bring that down just a little bit just to define the edge of the lens, just like that. And of course, then we've got my eyebrows. And as I said before, you can go as detailed on this as you like, or you can go as light as you like. It's, uh, it's up to you. This is your scroll saw pattern. There we go. And now that we have that drawn out, we'll just outline the hair. What little I have. And then that comes up around here for the head. Down here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to mimic my forehead by cutting kind of like a veining line but just a little thicker and then from there we can scribble in with my hair doesn't have to be perfect here Just like that. And then of course there's my ear. So you can pick the dark shadows in the ear and they will be cutouts. And then we have another one right here. Another kind of shadow here. And then we will finish off by defining the hair and that will give us the top edge of my ear. We can continue the cut around, just a veining cut there like that, just to give us some definition. Just like that. And then, of course, we can do the chin here. We'll start here. The chin comes down. Just like this. And then, of course, there's the collar of my shirt. You want to be careful there not to get into the in, into the edge of the ear here, because if you join those, then, of course, you lose some of the detail. Now, I just finished off that collar area just however I want it. I didn't think it was that important. And for this cheek here, we're just going to come up the chin. This will just be a veining cut. And we'll do the same thing over here. Okay, so where are we now at this point in time? Well, let's get the lights on and see. 
So we're coming along. I think we still need to define the chin here. There's quite a bit of shadow. And uh, once we do that, I think we can pretty much move on to cutting this out. Once you get everything drawn out, you want to look at your pattern and go through in your mind and make sure that you haven't lost detail um, or that you're not going to lose detail when you're cutting. And what I mean by that is this is a cutout, our mouth. We want to make sure that it doesn't come in contact with our lips. We're getting pretty close here with this tooth. And once we start coming in contact, if those lines of the teeth go up much further, it's gonna complete the cut and we're gonna lose the teeth. So you just want to make sure that each individual part that you've drawn out has uh, its own area. It doesn't join in with any other piece. So you just wanna make sure of that in order to make sure that your drawing is going to work. Once you get that done, I would suggest photocopying this. In case you mess up the cutting, at least you have a backup or scan it on your computer or what have you. But for me, I'm just gonna cut through the original and uh, it's no big deal. So let's get this put onto a piece of wood and I'll come back and see you in just a minute. And after three minutes, our spray adhesive is tacked up and we can lay our pattern in place. Okay, so I'm gonna take this over to the drill press. I'm going to drill my blade entry holes and then we're gonna take this over to the scroll saw and cut it out. I have a number two blade installed in the saw and we're just gonna cut this out. But guys, this is hardboard and this is nasty stuff. If you're gonna cut this stuff on the scroll saw, get a dust mask on because this stuff is, uh, is bad stuff. So without uh, further ado, Let's cut this out. there you have it. How to make scroll saw portrait patterns. Guys, honestly, this is a project that anybody can do. If you can trace, then you can make a scroll saw portrait pattern and make it look half decent. I scribbled this out in a matter of maybe five, ten minutes at the most. How much better would it be if I would have taken extra time and been a little more careful, you know, around the hair, the eyes, that sort of thing, and put more detail into the actual portrait. This is just a simple portrait, but you can see that the image isn't that bad. See? See, look, look, we're the same. <laughs> Guys, 
there's several keys to making a successful portrait scroll saw pattern. And it's gonna sound a little foolish coming the way I'm gonna say it, but you need to make sure that the eyes, mouth, nose, that sort of thing are the same. If the ears are a little off, who cares? But the shape of the eyes, the shape of the mouth, the shape of the nose, all of that defines what that person look like, looks like. And it's just very simple lines. You need to be able to pick out light and shadow. So, and you need to be able to differentiate between the two and be able to draw a definitive line. It's not always black and white. There's not always a hard shadow there to follow. Sometimes it's just a soft shadow, but you need that defining edge to give the picture life, to give the picture a definitive shape. Kind of like in this one where I defined around the nose. There really isn't any shadow there, but yet I still put some parts in there in order to define it. Around the outside of the cheekbones, it's all light. But what I did was use the background dark to give me that definitive line, and I just put a veining cut just to uh, accentuate or to highlight that cheekbone so that you could see what it looked like. The other um, key to a successful project here is have a clear photograph. I struggled a little on this one. For A, it was a picture from my iPhone, a quick selfie, which I then transferred to my computer and printed out in lower quality. Because of that, it's hard to, to pick out light and shadow. The clearer the picture is, the better results you will get and the easier it will be for you to see those lights and shadows. Now, I don't want to hear you guys say, oh, I can't do this, it's too hard, uh, you know, Kenny's an artist. No, no, I'm not. I'm not an artist. I can trace. I could eat crayons too if I wanted to, but I don't do that. I trace and this is what I've done here. You guys can do this too. It is so easy. If you're not sure, practice. That's all you have to do. Guys, I whipped this up on pieces of 1 8 inch hardboard, painted the one white, flat white. The backboard I painted flat black. I glued them together and look at your results. Are you kidding me? It's, it's a goofy looking face, but it's a good likeness. And it was done so quickly. Ow. <laughs> Guys, here's the other thing. Don't say, well, I don't have the light box. You don't need one. Get yourself some masking tape, your picture and your pieces of paper and tape it up to your window on a bright day. That light that's coming from the outside is enough to illuminate it and give you clear vision as to what it is that you need to trace the highlights and the shadows. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this project. If you haven't already, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Click the bell so that you don't miss the notifications of future episodes of the show. I thought that this would be a fun one to bring it uh, to bring to you just to show you that it's so simple that anybody can do it and anybody can have fun. What a great gift idea this would be for you to make and give to your loved ones. Really, it doesn't get any better than this. Guys, I want to thank you for tuning in. I hope you're going to try this project for yourself, and I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another Alternative Tuesdays.